meet some of the cast and the producers that are here today. And let's start with um, a man you all, the ladies love to love. Barbie, Mike Vogel. <laughs> Special guest star who plays the mysterious Christine Price, Marg Helgenberger. We've watched this young man grow up on this show. Colin Ford, who plays Joe McAllister. And executive producer, Tim Slotman. So we'll welcome the cast. And Tim, I want to start with you. You came over from Dexter. They kill folks. We killed on Dexter, folks. Yes. W are you planning on killing more folks? Well, you on know, Under the Dome? Uh, before I got to Chester's Mill, the body count was pretty high. <laughs> yeah. No, there's a lot of people missing from the there first are a lot year. Of people yes. Missing from the first two seasons. Uh, but yeah, this is, in a way, the storytelling is very much like Dexter this season. It's a little bit more serialized, and it's not quite so standalone. And you know, we threw a lot of stuff at you guys in the first two hours that's all going to play out over this entire season, not just over an episode, but the entire season. And I can assure all of you that we meant what we said. We are answering all the questions, maybe not in the time frame that you want, but by the end of the season, you will know everything and you're starting to see you know, the very first clues of that. Mark, if I can um, just quickly quote Mike's character, Barbie, who the hell are you? <laughs> are you good? Are you bad? Explain, Kristen. I'm complex. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> um, essentially, I uh, have um, an agenda for Chester's Mill, and I have a plan that I, you know, put into motion, and uh, I'm trying to get the whole community behind, because uh, I feel that it's the best thing for us to survive, because things are getting desperate, um, running out of supplies, etc. cetera. And um, so I, and I refer to this as a kinship, a collective, and um, some people go along and some don't. Mm -hmm. Hey, Mike, um, a couple of things I want to ask you, but I want to start with the love triangle. Yes, sir. How is it going? How's it playing in a love triangle? It's shapely. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's uh, Good answer. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a terrible problem to have. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, I, I said to Tim earlier on the season, I, I really... Um, Love triangles are tough because you've seen, and it's made it even more difficult by the the constructs of our show, which are everyone who's in here is in here. So how are we going to get more people in here to involve in a love triangle that we haven't seen? Is it just going to be hokey? The way that they orchestrated um, the time that we spent in the the matrix and the alternate reality um, that's doing that. Um, uh, I, I think it set up a believable premise as to how um, Mark's character, Kylie Bunbury's character, found their way into the dome, mm -hmm. um, and that Barbie and and Ava, uh, Kylie's, Kylie's character, have lived in their minds. They've lived a year. Uh, Julie and I have been together for a little over three weeks, so you can see how that might complicate things. <laughs> Must be crazy when you get the scripts. Like, um, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> It's fun. They're, they're two beautiful, wonderfully talented women, um, and they only fight once in a while. So I can't ask for much more. <laughs> and we gave you Barbie's ass this season, so come on. Uh, Where was I? I missed that. <laughs> well, you might have missed it. It was so small. It just... <laughs> uh. Hey, Colin, I want to ask you about being in the cocoon and getting out of the cocoon. Getting, what was that one more time? Getting out of the cocoon. What was that? How did that go when you shot the scene? It was cold, man. It was what? cold. But uh, no, I mean, it was definitely really cool. I know, I know Mike has a crazy story. Well, uh, and let me explain to everybody. You guys were trapped in the cocoon. You escaped. Right. But you didn't really escape easily. No, it was, it, was, uh, it was difficult, and you know, we came out of uh, we came out of the cocoons very confused, uh, kind of you know, not really wonder, like really not really knowing why we were there and, and what was going on, and then you know, in turn, kind of realizing what happened while we were in the cocoons was uh, was a big deal for us, and uh, I don't know, I think um, 
Uh, it's really crazy. By the way, if you want to recreate that at home for yourselves, all you need is some KY jelly and um, some corn syrup. So knock yourself That's what out. I was going to ask you. What is that goop really? And Mike, tell your story about getting out of a cocoon. Uh, Oh, I had to forcibly make an exit. Um, we were also <laughs> pumping dry ice into into um, you know the floor level, and as I look down, as I'm st standing in this cocoon, which takes 15 minutes to reset, um, I see the dry ice level kind of coming up. And one second I was breathing, the next se second I went to take a breath and there was no oxygen left because um, it displaces the oxygen. Mm -hmm. um, and I literally had to go into a bunch of uh, left hooks and roundhouse punches and punch my way out of this thing just so I could, uh, just so I could breathe. Um, and I ruined a cocoon doing it. So. <laughs> and, and it was our bad because we almost broke the one you know, kind of cardinal rule of television production, which is don't kill your actors. Right. Um, <laughs> I think it was. I think it was a veiled threat that was yeah. being sent my well, way. Well, we know you. You're, you're a method guy. So yeah. Why not I'd love to get that? into it. Mike has never forgotten a line since that day. It was. It was just. A, <laughs> just to let you know, Barbie could go sure. at any moment. <laughs> I didn't think they were being serious about that, though. Now, Mark, I heard that originally your character, they had a nickname of Margo because they were hoping to get you, but they weren't sure they could get you, so they nicknamed the character Margo. Is that true? That is true. Uh, Tim and yeah. Neil, who couldn't be here today, they, um, th yes, they had me in mind for the, uh, when they were conceived this character, which always is so flattering to hear for an actor. And um, yeah, and then they pitched this to me and over the phone, and it was uh, mystifying and yeah. <laughs> insane. I mean, the reality was, is we, you know, we just kept thinking, Oh, she's never going to want to do this. You know, this is this is really some crazy out there stuff. Um, but why not? Why not make that phone call? So right before the phone call started, I looked to Neil, our showrunner, and just said, you know, she's either going to, you know, hang up on us uh, and tell us we're crazy, or you know, hopefully she'll she'll want to do it um, and and not hang up on us. And she didn't. And uh, we just got incredibly lucky, but but not lucky in the sense of of um, you know, what she brings uh, to this role and to this character, those were the things that we were looking for, whether it was you know, Marg specifically, we needed a great actress and we got a great actress. Oh, aren't you sweet. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. <laughs> It's been a ball, though. It's what I really look forward to, the evolution of... And these guys aren't bad. I mean, I'm not Absolutely. saying... Yeah. <laughs> but, you know. <clears throat> but Mark's the best. Yes, Mark's the best. <laughs> hey, uh, Neil Bear couldn't be here, the exec one of the executive producers. He is sick. But um, I remember talking to the producers before the first season, and they said, well, we have about five years laid out. But, Tim, when you come in now and you kind of mess with that plan... <laughs> How did you mess with that plan? <laughs> what well, it's, kind of it's, crazy kooky changes? You know, I always kind make? of refer to this creative process of, of putting up your Christmas tree. You know, that's what we, the writers, do. We put up a tree, and we want to make sure we know what kind of tree we want, and if it's you know kind of upright and steady. And then you start putting the ornaments on. But if you put your ornaments on first, and you have a really shitty tree, um, <laughs> it's not going to look so great. So uh, I came into the show this season. Uh, so it had been on the air for two two seasons, and I kind of found all these Christmas presents presence under the tree already that I got to start to, to open up. And how I approached coming into a show that had already been up and running was a lot of these questions that we're answering are questions that I wanted answered because I was watching the show. And, and I wanted to know just what is up with the butterflies and, you know, the egg and the dome. And so, uh, you know, when we sat down with the other writers uh, and we just started, you know, kind of putting all of this together, some of it did fit into this master plan. Um, and then other things, we, we took some left-hand turns. Uh, but it's all going to tie together. It's all going to make sense in a, in a macro sense for the series. Uh, this season is paying off things that you saw in seasons one and two. Yeah. Hey, Colin, I want to ask you about Joe. We've watched you kind of grow up a little bit on this show. How will he continue to evolve this season? Oh, I think I think some of uh, Joe's best growth is in, in this third season. I, I think if we kind of look back at, at uh, season two, um, 
you know, with the with the losing of you know Angie and uh, all the other things that happened, I think Joe always looked up to to Barbie as as a hero and as kind of like a mentor, and I think um, he'll continue to do that. But I think he'll also in the, in this third season he he really finds himself and he really grows up. You know, he has a little bit of a, of a, a love triangle himself with. Uh, Hunter and Nori, so we'll see how that plays out and uh, see how he handles that. But I, I think Joe is a lot more courageous in this season and, and has a lot more to offer under the dome. He's also physically growing. <laughs> right. So, That's what we got to put people on boxes to make it believable that this has only been three weeks. Well, these damn love triangles are everywhere, aren't they? That's right. <laughs> Hey, Mark, what's the experience been like going down to Wilmington, joining this cast? You're a veteran of so many great shows, and what has it been like working with this crew? Uh, it's been wonderful. Everyone was very welcoming towards me, and I had been in Wilmington before 20-some years ago, and it's grown quite a bit, and it's a charming community, and, uh, you know, it's right on the water, and, uh, of course, you've probably heard about all the shark attacks. Um, <laughs> it hasn't yeah. stopped me from going in the water, though. Um, but, but everybody here, the, the cast, crew... Um, writing staff, everybody's been super cool and fun. Yeah, it's been a blast, huh? Yeah. Uh, every season, you lose people. Does that make it nervous every time you open the script? Because some, clearly someone's going to go this season. 100%. I actually, the next, well, the one we're shooting now, I won't reveal anything, but I couldn't believe what I do at the end of this episode. And I almost like just started crying. Um, Upon reading that, <laughs> they take they take a little bit of joy in breaking the news. Well, uh, we what always, is that process like when they break well, the you, news? How you does keep them on their best behavior? Uh, <laughs> you get your car washed, uh, <laughs> you know those little things, and and you know. I, I think sometimes a series, you know, can can have deaths that, that don't really mean anything, um, and and I think this season, these deaths, because you've you've come to know these characters so well, they're really going to matter uh, because it's all going to start to build really with tonight's episode and moving forward. They, it, you know, I usually don't use this kind of language, but things are going to get bananas. Bananas. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like um. Mark, you and Dean are trapped in a birdcage for a while. Yeah, that's th this season. <laughs> you want to tell us about that experience? Uh, yes, we have all, all of our scenes, all five, four or five of them, I can't recall now, but um, they were all inside a, a large birdcage, and we essentially have a philosophical discussion about man, humanity, you know. Uh, any kind of uh, life force out there and um, the differences between the two and which is more important and uh, more lasting and it was it was really fun working with him um, and and we had this you know cage between us and uh, I guess you'll have to watch to see what what uh, it all entails yeah, Big Jim has really met his match uh, and the thing that makes him such a uh, a foe for Christine is he's a narcissist. He's this self-centered, I come first uh, before anybody else. And if you are coming from a collective, the kinship kind of point of view, that is, no pun intended, that is really alien to you. That how could anyone be that self-centered? And yet you're going to need that to survive. And that's something that Julia is going to start to understand uh, and get a kind of a new appreciation of Big Jim this season. How has the cast welcomed all the new folks, Mike? I will ask you and Colin, as the new folks have come in. There's a brief like hazing period. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, they've obviously survived. Um, but no, it's, a, it's, a, it, it's always great having people come in, and, and um, sometimes they come in and stay, and sometimes they don't. But it's, uh, we've, we've, we've been really fortunate to have a lot of great eggs uh, uh, over the last couple of years walk through the door, and, um, and it's always been painful watching them go because it, it, filmmaking is weird that way. You take six months and you jump into this pit, and your life, revolves around these people constantly and so uh, everything happens faster relationships happen faster your friendships form mm -hmm. faster and and then all of a sudden it's like break everyone goes back to their lives and well, wait a minute but this was just the life we were all living so it's tough when someone has to leave it's fun when someone else comes in and um, like I said we're, we're just really blessed to have had some really good ones come through and, and some really fantastic ones come in now 
Thank so you. Can you give us, oh, go ahead, Mark, I'm sorry. I mean, oh, all I was just going to add to that, <laughs> when you say when you, these relationships, you, you become very close very quickly. I mean, when you have to do any kind of love scenes, <laughs> <laughs> you guys can attest to that. Yeah. Right? It's just, oh, day two? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's just uh, kind of surprising. And then, you know, you're done with the scene and doop doo doo you go off and no big deal, you know? Like, in life, you'd never do that. Oh, you At don't? At least I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Colin, teach us. I Colin, know, teach us something. Shield his eyes. Come on, Colin. Uh, no, I mean, I, I would just say, you know. To yeah, that, next question. To that, <laughs> to that note, uh, I like, I, you know, I really, really enjoy when we get new cast members because being one of the younger cast members on the show, uh, I find it a, a chance to, like, learn from, from you and, and, and Kylie Bunbury as well and, and whoever else we may be having on a, a particular episode. But I just find it uh, to be really cool to see, meet different actors and actresses and, and get to know them and become friends and, and, and then learn. What have you learned? Uh, <laughs> oof. Now you're... I know how to play a good villain now. <laughs> okay. All right. Watch out when you sit next to the season pro. <laughs> oh. <laughs> She's done a few of these panels. Tim, can we give, for each character, just a little direction of where they're headed? Tim, can we give, for each character, just a little direction of where they're headed? In um, your mind. Because well, they may not know. Humanity may very well rest on this one. Um, this one, oh man, she's just getting warmed up with the kind of the stuff that she's, she's got coming. Um, and for Barbie, you know, um, he might want to start thinking about shopping at Toys R Us. <laughs> oh. How, uh, for uh, <laughs> multiple toys or just, I mean, is he buying for two uh, sets of kids? Or? It's, it's an alien life force. Um, you never there may, know how, there many, may be a how many toys they need, you know? <laughs> uh, you know what, looking at Barbie's character and his evolution and the women in his life. <laughs> many have you had, are. The many women. Have you had a favorite? <clears throat> um... Be careful, Mike. I know, I know, I'm really going down a dangerous road here. I'm sorry. Be careful, Mike. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We're going down a dangerous road. Um, I, listen, I, I, R Rochelle and I have, uh, have really um, formed a wonderful bond over the three years that we've done this, and to have... Uh, to have another actress that you can you can trust in in almost every circumstance in every scene to to show up give a hundred percent and and is respectful of of boundaries and everything else we both kind of we both get it in a way that you don't usually it's a beautiful dance find. you're doing right now go ahead like that? go ahead yeah no it's a you great like dance go ahead <laughs> <laughs> but you know I'd have to say uh, I say of all of them um, they all hold a special place in my heart but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> have I hit everyone? Um, but yeah, R Rochelle and I, I think, have a special, special little, special little actory bond. Actory bond. Actory bond. Hey, uh, Tim, what is it do you feel that, and what is the reason that people are so attached to this show and Chester's Mill? You know, I, I think it just it, it gets back to just um, genre kinds of shows. Um, the thing that attracts me, just as an audience member, not as a writer, you know, so much, um, are the shows that ask the big questions, like what if? And to me, that's the potential of telling a story under a dome. It's such a, an amazing big, you know, concept and, and premise. Uh, to explore and haven't haven't seen that done before and and so you get to tell maybe familiar themes in the stories but I think this one resonates because when you get a group of people together and, and you certainly see it in reality TV uh, it does sometimes bring out the best in people and brings out the worst in people and I think you can identify with those members on a reality show and I think you can identify with these members these characters uh, on a show like like under the dome you can relate to these people who are in a horrible, terrible situation, mm -hmm. um, and so that's that's something that's incumbent upon us as as writers is is to find those things that you, the audience, can relate to, and would you do the same thing in that situation? Yeah. Uh, and it's really something I learned on Dexter. You know, we made uh, a serial killer someone you wanted to root for. So um, that 
that takes some doing, and and um, and I think you know that's why the show resonated, and the good shows really do. And I think that's why this is one of those good shows. Is you've got these incredible characters uh, that you're going to see different aspects aspects to, uh, especially this season. So everything you saw in the Matrix, it did matter. It wasn't just make believe. We're going to see the repercussions of all of it. By the way, I hear the cheers from the Dexter fans out there. Are the Dexter mm -hmm. fans that were. <laughs> A lot of people love that show. Oh, yeah. I got a lot of anger out. Uh, you know, eight <laughs> seasons on that one. Uh. <laughs> hey, um, Mark, and I, well, I'll ask the whole cast, but I know you guys have been here, but what makes it special to be here at Comic-Con besides just being able to interact with the fans? So many things. I mean, first off, the city of San Diego to host this uh, all these years, and it's such a amazing, mm -hmm. yeah. The weather does uh. not suck. What's that? The weather's pretty doggone good, isn't it? Uh, almost perfect, yeah. honestly. And it, but it's just a beautiful city, incredibly beautiful, and um, so welcoming. And uh, the group of people that attend this from all over the world, I mean, God bless all of you. I mean, some of you have come from I don't know even how far away, and, and your, your support and um, your you know, love and, and that you have for every show that you're here for is something that means a great deal to all of us. And I, I hope you all can feel that we have a great deal of love and respect for all of you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mark, since you've investigated a few crime scenes in your um, <laughs> career, <laughs> a few. How should, how should we go about unraveling your character? How should we go about unraveling your character? <laughs> well, let's see. The character I played on CSI, Catherine Willows, what would she have to do with this? Uh, uh, I think she would probably take one look at her <laughs> and, and, and size her up and, and get her number immediately and know how to handle her. Yeah. Um, and it would probably be just a put her in a sane asylum, <laughs> keep her there, throw away the key. <laughs> Lock her in a cage with Dean. Yeah. So Mark, would Catherine have caught Dexter? Ooh. Of course. Ooh. <laughs> you won't let that happen, will you? No. You will not let that happen. Hey, uh, Mike, your Comic-Con experience, because you've been here, you've been here a few times. How is this for you, and what's special about being here? Well, for us, it's a, it's a great shot in the arm because, um, you know, we're over in Wilmington for months and months and months filming, and the show starts airing. And it's the beauty of, of, of where we are in North Carolina is that it's a, it's a great small town, uh, uh, very low-key, so you don't ever get to feel the energy and the, just that, that, that palpable energy that's coming from people for a show and for the work that you're doing because we're putting a ton of work into it, they're putting a ton of work into it, and to come here, this is kind of the epicenter where everyone lets it all hang out and it just kind of fills our cup again to see all y'all's uh, enthusiasm and excitement and it lets us go, oh yeah, right, uh, it, that's why we're doing it. And just so everybody knows, really literally being in Wilmington, they are in their own little world. They're under their own little dome, the actors are. And so it's a special kind of place to do and film stuff because you are away from the whole Hollywood hubbub. Yeah, right. And then you come out into the world, you emerge into the world like, whoa. Boom. A lot's happened in six months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Boom. It hits you. Um, Colin, I'm going to let you, because I just got the one more question, wrap this thing up, but I'm going I'm to let you wrap it up. How would you wrap up the under the dome experience and what this show has meant, not only for you, but for, your, for the cast members who have survived, for those of you who've made it to season three. How would I wrap it up? How would you wrap up what this experience has been like? Uh, well, I think the experience overall has been um, incredible for me, especially like you, know, you said earlier, I, I've kind of grown up on this show. I mean, I've, and, and like I said, when, whenever we get new cast members, I feel like I'm constantly watching and, and learning and uh, trying to better myself as an actor. And then, and also, you know, we have writers who come hang out on set, who make sure that we're not messing up our lines and whatnot. But it's really cool to get to talk to them about, you know, what's either coming up in the next episode or, or just figuring out a way to better my craft. I feel like Under the Dome has been a really, really helpful um, thing, a really helpful 
I, want to say, I don't want to say job because it doesn't feel like a job, but it's been a really helpful job for me in order to figure out myself and uh, you know figure out my career and everything. And I think that we're all kind of uh, doing that as well. All right, Tim, Colin, Mark, and Mike, thanks for being here today under the dome. You can check it out tonight, tonight's episode. Tune in. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right, guys. Thank you for being here today. Can we, can Thank you, Kevin. One? Well done. Huh? Oh, no, no. Fun. Can we do one thing before we go? Can we take a picture with everybody? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, here, here. Come over here. Let's take everybody. Just, you can, like, stand up or lean in or squish together, everybody. Okay, here, here. Here, you guys. Here. How do we do this? With the Microsoft Surface. Yeah. All right, everybody. Let's make sure you get, get in there. Get in. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. 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 Wave, you guys. Wave. Wave. Oh, let's get that side. Oh, All yeah, right, this side. Wave, you guys. <laughs> All right, thank you.